Hello, friends. I'm Father Richard, pastor of the wonderful parish of St. Clair on Staten Island. There's a church in, in Manhattan that has a very nice custom. Once a year, they invite all of the students whose families are part of this church uh, to gather together for what they call Student Recognition Day. And it begins at a, at a, a prayer service and the, the prayer um, is designed to encourage the kids to keep on studying and to start dreaming big dreams. Um, it, um, it is to recognize those who have been working hard and, and even during the course of the prayer service some kids will get up and they will do reflections on um, what the year ha ha has been like for them and that it all ends with a big pee in, in, in the hall after, after the service. Well, one year when this service was going on, some of the young people got up and, and, and they spoke eloquently. And then it came time for the preacher up and give his sermon. And he began his sermon in a memorable and striking way, but it was really kind of off-putting. This is what he said. Young people, people, you may not think you are going to die, but you are. <laughs> I'm not quite sure that a service like that should have had started with those words. And it got worse, worse. He said, after that, he said, they're going to drive you to the cemetery, they're going to drop you down a hole, and then throw dirt on top of you, and then they're all gonna leave, and they're gonna have lunch and drinks. Oh my goodness, this is not what should be said to kids when you're recognizing them uh, on Student Recognition Day. And then I began to scratch my head and say to myself, you know, I'm pushing 48 years as a priest. And I've always kind of been mesmerized by Ash Wednesday because churches throughout the world are packed with people on this day. And do you know what the, mess what the message is today? You're gonna come up the aisle in a few minutes and one of the ministers is going to put dirt on your forehead, ashes on your forehead, and they're going to say, remember you are dust and unto dust you shall return. Who wants to come to church and hear that? <laughs> um, it is really kind of off-putting, and I always wonder why so many Catholics come to church to listen to that message on Ash Wednesday. And believe me, we have been busy here from seven o'clock this morning until tonight, and it's the same message over and over again. Now, if you're lucky, when you come up this aisle, one of the ministers may be very, may be very artistic. And as they put the ashes on your forehead, they really will manage to put a perfect cross on your forehead. You probably don't remember this, but the first time to church, most likely you were carried into church by your mom or your dad. And before the water was poured on your head and you were baptized, you were greeted at the doorway of the church. 
of the church. And there at the doorway, the priest said to you and called you by name and said, the Christian community welcomes you with great joy. In its name, I claim you our Savior by the sign of his cross. And I now trace the cross on your forehead and I invite your parents and your godparents to do the same. That, that cross makes a statement. It says, you are known by name by God and he loves you beyond imagining. It also says every single one of us in this church is worth dying for. And that is what Jesus did for each one of us. That's how much God loves us. And so while tonight we're reminded we ain't forever, we are also reminded that we are loved forever in the heart of God. And that's what this cross is all about. And if you really accept that, then during Lent, for the next 40 days, you're asked to do three things. Number one, pray. So when you get up in the morning, just say a little prayer, like this. Jesus, I trust in you. In you. Lord Jesus, thank you for bringing me to this day. Help me to be close to you during the day. And then you're asked to do something hard. Think of something you really like and give it up. And don't 40 days, just take it one day at a time. Think of something you really like and give it up. And when the craving comes or the pang of hunger, then open your heart to God, your heart to God, and ask Him to fill it up. Because when we're empty, God has a way of coming in and filling us up. And you know what? When you're craving for something or you have a pang of... Remember, there are people who by no choice crave every single day or hunger every single day because they're poor. And this helps you to unite with them and to pray for them and maybe what you've given up will give you a little pocket change to save and give to someone who really needs it because that's the third thing we're asked to do to show a little bit of mercy kindness to others you put all of those three things together and this becomes a really good Lent which will lead to a very happy Easter. And if this is the way, this is the way we live for our lives, or at least try to live this way, then when that day comes, which we don't want to think about, when they put us in a hole, and they throw dirt on us and they go off and have their lunch and have drinks together. They'll say, what a kind and wonderful person that was. And whether they do or not, he knows what's in our heart. And he will welcome us to that banquet in heaven that goes on, goes on forever. May this be a wonderful Lent for all of us.